Hello and welcome to Hop Along Studio. So in today's video, I want to share with you how you can make an Easter card using watercolor crayons, distress inks, and Wall Whisperer Designs paper. So let's get started. So let's talk about the paper that we'll be using today. So this Nicole Wright Designs Fanciful Florals paper basically is a collection of paper that has uh, black and white doodles on one side and art and color on the other. So as you can see, each of these designs are unique. They all can be colored using different mediums, uh, but what I love about them is the other side also has a pattern. So this is probably one of my, my favorite Well Whisper Designs sets of paper because of the variety of colors on the back and the imagery on the front. And what's nice about the Well Whisper Designs paper is they always provide an extra sheet. So this is actually the cover for the collection and then on the back of it they do it with really good quality paper so that they can actually give you some extra images. And sometimes it's nice if you actually want to test out a paper with coloring and you don't necessarily want to use your 12 by 12 sheet of paper, these little bits here you can use as a place to sample. So for, for me, I was actually using this to sample different watercolor mediums and inks on this paper. And this way I don't have to worry about ruining or maybe not having the right result on a full size piece of paper. So the image we're going to actually use today for this card is the six by six piece of of the Nicole Wright Designs Fanciful Florals paper. So I'm going to cut this out and then we'll move on to the next step. So now that I've cut out this piece of paper, the next thing I want to do is start adding some color to it. There's a few different things that I like using for these papers. What's nice about this particular paper, it is very smooth. So it actually is really nice when you're applying inks and especially if you tend to get marks when you are ink blending. This is a very smooth paper so you'll have an easier time with this paper than you will have with some other surfaces. So I'm going to start by adding in some squeezed lemonade ink. And I just want to add it very softly around the edges and even have it overlap onto the images slightly. What I want to do is I don't want to necessarily remove all of the white because then you're going to have to actually color in all of these little spots here. And I don't really want to do that. Maybe maybe I'm lazy, but I, I look at it as is, it's nice to actually leave some white space in places. I'm terrible at leaving white space, so it's definitely something that I try to practice so that I can start getting a little bit better at it. It's okay to actually have it overlap on top of the images as well because I'm going to be coming in with some watercolor crayon and we can clean up things as we go. And now I'm going to go in with some blue and also add some blue and try to mix these colors a bit together. I'm going to have some blue on the flowers themselves and purple so I'm trying to have this kind of tie in but at the same time not necessarily compete just around the flower. That's part of the reason I chose the yellow for where I added it just so that it allows me to have a little bit more contrast than maybe I would have if I actually had blue background close to blue flower. And then again, by mixing these two colors together, you get these wonderful green tones as well. You've probably noticed a lot of my art, I don't usually generally go very light with my colors. I, uh, I tend to be quite vibrant. So this is a little bit of a, a challenge for me not to overdo it. <laughs> I do find leaving white space can be really challenging when you're trying to do a project. It's so easy to try to add in more color because it always feels like more color is better, <laughs> but not always, not always. And the nice thing about Distress Ink is you can keep layering and layering until you get the color you want. And that's the nice thing about it because you'll notice the color on the lid is quite a bit darker than the color on the on the card and the reason for that is, is is that's on purpose. The idea is that this is the pure color. Well what you want to do is actually get up to that color by just adding layer on layer of color. So the idea is that you're not putting everything on in just one layer. And 
And part of the reason I also chose the yellow and the green was because this way, when I'm actually doing some of these other leaves and everything else, it doesn't matter that I've actually inked over top of them in areas. The colors will work together. So I think that's good enough for now. So again, just trying to get some color down, but not having it overwhelm the card. So now that you finished inking, the next thing you want to do is start adding your Neo2 watercolor crayons to your paper. These watercolor crayons are actually a new product for me. Uh, these are actually made in Switzerland. So they're very high quality. They have a lot of pigment and uh, they're actually one of my new favorite tools. So to actually add the crayon, you just, you don't color everything. You basically just add a little bit of a rim of color to some of the places that you, that you want it. These are quite pigmented. So a little bit goes a long way. So once you apply your color, the next thing you want to do is come along with your watercolor brush. I'm actually using a size zero for this, just to give me a little bit of room to work. And you just want to blend it in a little bit like that. And if you feel like it's not quite dark enough, the beauty of this is because they are reactive, you can just add color right on top of the wet and that works as well. So this is where it's, it has some advantages over um, watercolor pencils because watercolor pencils, you have to actually let it dry before you can add more color. Well, this you can add some color in, you can blend a little bit, add some more color in, blend a little bit, and it's actually a quite, quite a bit quicker way of working. And this is different, even though it's wax, I believe that these crayons are still, uh, have a waxiness to them to hold the pigment in. They handle things differently than a watercolor pencil. So I used to really like my watercolor pencils, but now that I've actually explored watercolor crayons, they're, I find them even better. I would say that I still have places where I like using my watercolor crayons. Uh, sorry, my watercolor pencils, but I do really enjoy these watercolor crayons. The reason I got these originally was actually for my art classes. I was doing a lot of painting and one thing I've learned about painting is if you can sketch in your image before so you can get, make sure that you have your dimensions right and all of your eyes right and everything else before you start painting, it speeds up your process a lot. and. I've tried everything from dried pastel to a lot of different things, even paint just to outline my, my images. But what I find is watercolor crayon is actually the best. It goes on solidly so you can see it, so you know where to paint. But what's nice about it is, is because it is fully water soluble, the moment you put your paint over top of it, it pretty much disappears. And so when you're working on getting better at art quicker. It's those little tools, being able to actually have a watercolor crayon, which helps you get the shape that you need really quickly. But at the same time, it doesn't necessarily stay there. So you don't have to worry about trying to paint over it, that it makes such a difference. But then once I've actually gotten them, I've been kind of exploring what we can do with them. And I realized that like using them to outline images on my paintings is just the tip of the iceberg. These things are a pretty incredible medium in their own right. So as you can see, I just basically went back and forth between the crayon and the watercolor brush. And the nice thing is when you, with this paper, it does handle quite a bit of water, but by going back and forth, by starting with a little bit of color and making sure you get kind of the, the coverage that you want and then adding in the deeper hues to add a little bit of darker color, it's a great way of working with these. And the next thing I'm going to do is go in with some purple. And this is a bigger area, so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing here. And because these are highly pigmented, the nice thing about it is you don't have to put on a ton for it to be able to spread and, and do what you want it to do. This is the thing about the high quality artist tools is I think a lot of people look at them and go, well, I'm not an artist. Well, you're not, but it doesn't mean you can't use really great tools that really help you in your creative practice. And I find the better the art tool, I usually buy whatever I, I can afford. And sometimes that means I'm buying something expensive. Sometimes it means I'm buying things that are a lot less expensive. But I would say that the higher the quality of the materials you use, uh, the easier it's going to be on you, especially if you're new to it. Because I, I can tell you the first while for me when I was learning to to use brushes and to color and, and uh, learn to paint and everything else, it was really hard at the beginning because 
I wasn't using really good tools. And when I actually started investing in some better paint and some better brushes and everything else, what a difference it made for how quickly I progressed and improved. So you can see it makes that really nice blend really quickly. And then it mixes those two colors together pretty much seamlessly, like it's one layer of color. You can see there by just adding in that color, I added a little bit more intensity to it very easily. I tried to add a little bit too much crayon before I had actually blended all the way to the edges and, and had a full layer down. And so I ended up with uh, maybe rubbing the paper a little too hard on that one. So it's something to be aware of. Like you want water on your brush because you need the water to help things move. But if you have a huge puddle, it sometimes doesn't help you. And then you can end up not doing a bit of damage to the paper. And this paper is great, but it is not watercolor paper. And now I'm going to go with a deeper blue. And I try to use the side of the pencils where I can, just because it kind of helps you keep it with a tip. And I just noticed that I actually did pull a little bit of the color because I had it on the side. You had to be a little bit careful of that because I accidentally pulled it into the purple. But because these colors are, are next to each other on the color wheel, it helps because you can just, again, grab your paintbrush, add a little bit of water, pull off the color that you don't want. So as I was saying, basically the Wild Whisper paper is has a very smooth finish, which is really great when you're trying to add in paint and other mediums to it because it actually reacts really well. And it, will, it won't just destroy the paper. It actually helps you be able to use a lot heavier mediums in it that you would use on a regular piece of, of patterned or scrapbooking paper. But it is quite smooth, so depending on what you like to do with it, it can be a little bit, it's a bit of a different finish, and I, I personally love it, but it is something that you need to get used to, and I find with every piece of paper, depending on how it is created, takes mediums differently. So. It's one of those things you have to do some experimentation and figure out what really works for you, what you like in a paper, and how you like to use some of these products on your papers. And then I'm going to try to come in with this yellow. This is a little bit challenging because this is not meant for really small areas. So I'm just going to try to get a little bit of color down. I'm just going to take my brush. I'm actually going to move to a smaller brush again. Uh, so if you if you don't know much about watercolor brushes, they come in a lot of different sizes. When you try to do fine detail stuff, uh, a triple zero zero is really great for. But it's not a great one to use when you're trying to do large washes or large areas. Because again, your paintbrush is only going to hold so much water when they have these really tiny bristles. So this is why I have such a combination in sizes. And there's your yellow in there. And then I'm going to finish the center with a little bit of the pink because I like the little bits of hints of pink there, but I'm going to bring a little bit more attention to it here. And again, I don't always go out all the way to the edges, especially when there's another color, because again, I can basically just use my watercolor brush to pull the color out to the edges. And if you're not comfortable with using watercolor paints, this might be a really good option because again this doesn't bleed into other colors the way watercolor paints usually do so if you're learning this might be a really great place to start it's a little bit gentler and forgiving a medium what's nice about these big areas is you can 
add color on like so. It makes it really fast. And now I'm using a size four watercolor brush just to mix this a little bit. So as you can see, as the paint reacts to the water, you can end up getting a really nice smooth blend. I'm actually going to add in a few blue spots. We'll see how that looks. Okay, just as I did that, I realized I'm like, I have to be a little bit more careful about where I just scribble the next color on because it doesn't meld quite as well as the original color does. So instead of just scribbling randomly, I need to actually try to follow <laughs> the, the shape a little bit better. Again, these are a new product for me, so I'm still learning some of the ins and outs. I think that looks better. I like having things with more than one color. So by doing that base color and then just adding colors on top, you can end up with some really neat variation. For that last flower, I think I'm going to actually stick with more of the yellow. Keep a nice bright blue. I'm actually going to go for the lighter blue. Let's do a lighter blue center. Actually, let's go for a darker blue center. I'm kind of making this up as I go along, so... I actually decided I wanted to pull a little bit of the color out into the flower, just a little bit on the edges. So I basically made the pool in the center and just pulled a little bit. And so now you have this very light kind of greenish yellow color. But that way you don't end up having to put on a really strong stroke of color. This is where you can get some of those more subtle looks to this. And these little bluebells. We'll move on to our leaves. And this is when I'm just kind of doing an overall wash with the light green. With a lot of these ones, you'll notice I'm starting kind of lighter to darker. So the thing with the watercolor is you can go darker, but it's hard to go lighter. And in this case, I'm actually going to add a little bit of the color down for the first layer. I found that by, with the way I had done it the first time, I wasn't being able to get rid of some of those, those marks. So I'm going to start with doing the lighter side first. And now we're going to move on to moving to the darker side. And now if I want to add in some darker color, that's blending a little bit better. And that's the thing is you need to have a certain amount of water on your surface to help these blend. Without it, you end up uh, with a little bit of trouble. You end up with maybe some streaky marks or other things that maybe you don't really want. And I think this would work, uh, the same project would work quite well with any sort of watercolor crayon. I just happen to have these particular ones, which I know are, they're made in Switzerland. They're, they're very highly pigmented, but I know there are other ones on the market. I, I don't, I can't recommend any of them because I haven't used them, but I can recommend these ones because I, I find them actually really helpful for this.
And so now with all of these little swirls in here, I could leave them open, but I actually do want to add some color to some of them. I don't think I have the control right now to be able to do these really well on camera. So what I'm going to do is actually use this zebra pen, gel pen, to fill in some of these spots. And there's no shame if you're finding that you like doing color, but you're having a little bit of trouble getting perfect control. Brush work is not easy at the best of times, and so I've learned that showing a little bit of gentleness to yourself as you're learning to do brush work, that it, it gets better over time. My brush work from a year ago was way, it has improved drastically since then. So before we call this done, the one thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of sparkle because I always love adding sparkle to my projects. So Winsor Newton has this iridescent medium. It's basically the silver watercolor medium. You can actually mix it into your paints and other things, but it is, it is very iridescent and I, I love adding this as accents onto some of my work. So I'm not using a watercolor brush because my watercolor brushes are, are expensive and they will not tolerate this, but I basically just take a regular brush, dip it in and just flick a little bit. So the final thing to do is add your sediment. I'm using Happy Easter as my sediment. You can really use birth, Happy Birthday. You can really use any sort of sediment that you want. I use the Well Whisper capital letter stamps to stamp out Happy using Distress Ink, and I cut them out using my brother's scanning cut. For Easter, I actually hand wrote Easter using some jelly pens and also created a little bit of a shadow around them to help it pull out from the background. And again, I left little white borders around everything that will also help it to pop and to be separate from the background. So to add a little bit of height to this layout, I'm actually just going to use these foam dots to actually pop up my letters. And sometimes you run into ones that are really thin like that. I'm actually going to cut these ones in half. Because as long as you get a little bit of the adhesive onto the glue dots, there's no reason that you can't make that work. So here's your completed card. As you can see, I've actually added it to a card back. I have also used the foam dots for popping up the letters. This actually feels like it makes the sediment a little bit more forward in the card, but by actually having this overlapping and being able to see some of the of the flowers in the background. It helps kind of tie everything together. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, if you could like it, subscribe to my channel, and maybe provide a comment below about what you liked about this video. Also my website, hopalongstudio.com, where I have other ideas on how to build a creative habit in your own life. Also, if you're interested in any of the Well Whisper Designs products, if you use DT Nadine at checkout, you will get a discount on your next order. I hope you have a really great week, and I will see you next time.